Hi, and welcome back for episode seven. This is the last episode of our seven part series of our sailing trip to Santa Cruz Island. In episode six, we pulled up our anchor and sailed back towards Ventura. Along the way, we ran into some playful seals. And then once we arrived in Ventura, we did a cruise swap where Sam got off and Tucker and Abby joined the crew. We just spent the night in a hotel, so join us now as we wake up and plan our last couple of days of coastal cruising. Got to have some pizza last night and uh, sleep in a bed. It was really nice. We're at Ventura Marina, I think, behind us. And we're gonna go get our boat now. I think we're just gonna go for a quick day sail, maybe to another marina to the south of here. We're gonna get to the boat and see. The weather's supposed to, wind's supposed to pick up a little bit around two or three or four o'clock tonight. So we're gonna try to be back in a cove by then. See how it goes. Cass is working on getting her tooth out right now. Does the tooth fairy come to the sailboat? We just had to call her. California tooth fairy is still Okay, so just um, pushing out now into Ventura Harbor. I'm just gonna go out for just a quick little ocean sail uh, down the coast. We decided we would sail to Ventura and then turn south and do the 5.3 nautical miles down to Port Buenimi. It was a really relaxing sail with light winds and calm seas. There was, however, still that rolling swell coming out of the Pacific. As we approached the port in our sailboat, we realized that there were definitely two different entrances to the harbor. So finding our way into, uh, into the Channel Islands Marina, and there's a breakwater out in front, and so I was trying to figure out which is the best way to come in. There's a north and south entrance. I tried the marina, they didn't have good information. I tried uh, no Coast Guard station here. I called the, uh, the number listed on the Avionics uh, map, there was nothing there. Eventually I reached the uh, Harbor Patrol and got some great information. And they told me that the north side is fine. They've recently dredged it, so there shouldn't be a water uh, problem with breaking, uh, breaking waves. It's about, I don't know, probably about a seven foot or eight foot swell right now. So it looks, it's at like 15 seconds or 20 seconds, so it's, it's fairly benign uh, in these conditions. I just didn't want to get into shallow water and have any issues, but they said I'll be fine. So I'm gonna go for this uh, entrance. Yeah, we want to go just to the uh, left side of that jetty out there. Do you have a button? It doesn't look too bad, and as we get closer now, it's starting to really show how we're supposed to get through here. So it's just good to know ahead of time, though, because you could end up in like massive breakers like that are right over there. He told me to watch out. They just they were in a dredging operation, so he said watch out for this stuff. Uh, you can see up to our uh, starboard, we've got a bunch of um, dredging like equipment. I don't. <laughs> It looks like a lot of it looks like a lot of uh, hose for moving sand and such. I'm guessing. I'm no expert though. Uh, check Wikipedia. Right, how are you feeling? A little sick. A little sick? Yeah, a little bit. I'll make it. Okay, we're gonna do an experiment on recovery time from seasickness. Okay. So on your seasickness scale of like I'm gonna throw up versus I'm fine. Where are you at? You think right now as far as the number? Six. You're at a six. Okay, so he's at a C six ness, and it's um, and it's uh, one o'clock. So we'll see how quick he recovers. Anytime you notice some remarkable improvement, let us know, okay? Because we're now out of the waves. At four. Oh, you're at a four already? Yeah. Oh, like less than a minute into it, he says he's at a four already. And I can't tell you how much I do appreciate this. Pelagic autopilot for like making everything so easy on me so I can concentrate on a hundred other things rather than trying to keep the boat heading in exactly the direction I want so okay we're five minutes after the hour Tucker vomit vomit level <laughs> yeah six when we pulled in got down to a four I think I'm probably gonna be there until I'm off the water yeah so we made it in Jessica's uh working on the phone getting trying to figure out where we stay because we didn't really arrange that ahead of time. She's gonna try to find us a slip for the night. We heard there's a sushi restaurant here. It was just Tucker's birthday. So we might try to get Tucker some sushi. Okay, 15 minutes into it. Tucker, 15 minutes into it. How exhausted are you? Or how, what's, what's the number? Three. 
Three and eight, okay. It's gonna stay here though, it's not gonna go low. Well, that's you said about four though. Fine, I'm at four. Okay, so we made it into the marina. Uh, Jess got to anchor it. I'm, I should have videotaped it, or not anchor it. She got to dock it. She did a great job. I should have videotaped it. We pulled up to the fuel dock. Without, they said to go to the dock by the fuel dock. So we went to the dock by the fuel dock. Of course, they said, sorry, if you're not buying fuel, you can't park here. They've got, um, <laughs> they've got like four or five different spots for boats to fuel with. And they said, no, you're at the wrong one. You need to move over here. Granted, maybe I'm not savvy enough in like how the ocean works and how these marinas work. But you think you'd be like, well, I'll tell you what, you can stay here. And um, if someone comes, would you move your boat? Instead, we got kicked out. He's in charge of the fuel pumps and he knows the rules. Okay, so Jess, you want to steer straight and keep the bow slightly off the dock as we go. It's funny that he made us move, but we're not even filling up gas right now. This is so good. Oh, Jessica yeah, Briggs, ladies and gentlemen. So there's a two hour public dock right over here on the left by this red roof building. That's how we get to the beach. And then we can go to the end of this very end of this waterway in our dinghy, and there's a bond. Tucker, scale one to ten, where you at? Uh, two. Two still. A little stuff going on still, though. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But you got some hard land, though. Yeah. You guys should have been on this boat for New Year's, right, Cass? Yeah. It was so fun. We partied like we do on the East Coast. Yes. Yeah. It's three hours early. See that boat? Do you want the boat with the paddle wheel? For what? You see it right there? No. no. <laughs> well, that was a big lead up, though. I want the one with the paddle wheel because it's so big. Oh, Cass, what do you think? What kind of boat is that? Oh, that one is? Yeah. yeah. This one has a swing pull on it. What? That one has a swing pull on it. Where? I mean, maybe. You see if I can make chat cast change your mind. Fine, I want that one, bye. Well, if you guys make enough money, you can have whatever you want. Oh, that, that looks, this is like, this is a little bit where like, a little jankier of our on this side of the marina. Yeah, I know. And this like the rooms are boarded up. Look at the rooms, they're boarded up. I know that. I Rooms think... are boarded up and the boats are mildly derelict. Is, is that our spot right there, Jess? Right there between those two boats? Well, that's got caution tape, so I assume not. You bet it would be cheap, though. Where are we supposed to go? So we're looking for Peninsula Park. <gasps> oh, big bird. Park in there. Big bird. Mom, look at the bird. Hello, Mom. bird. Yeah. Hello. We worked our way to Peninsula Park. When we got there, we tied up on the channel side of the dock. After looking at it for a little bit, we determined that with our swing keel and shallow draft, it would be better to go to the other side of the dock where we'd be protected from the winds and waves that were coming this evening. I'm guessing this approach was a little bit unorthodox because each time someone came by, they looked at us like we were a little bit nuts. The marina offered free electrical, but we had no plugs like this in our boat. If you happen to know what they are, mention it in the comments below so the next person might be able to hook up. All right, so we scored a little dock space. How much was it? How much was it? 38? not bad. It beats 110 for a hotel. And then our daughter has completely gone crazy. We haven't seen her. She turned the corner a little while ago. She, she went too far through the turn. She probably ended up in the water. Go Cass, go! So excited. You guys like this place? Wow, look at those weird trees. We are, what, about an hour and a half now? Tucker, where are you at? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Okay, so to your seasick friends, if they are thinking that life is horrible, hour and a half, hit the bank, in an hour and a half, they will be ready to do sh tequila shots. <laughs> tequila shots! Um, so everybody says Santa baby is a baby. Sam's not a baby. Sam's not a baby. It's not a baby. And I'm gonna send it to Sam. Abby, Abby, say it with me. Oh, no, you, you, got, you got yourself into this. You just try it. You just try it. It's like, are you okay, baby? Honey, honey, like honey, it's, it's, it's like, like Santa baby, are you okay? Oh, <laughs> oh boy, it's getting dark in here. <laughs> it is not me, it, it doesn't mean baby Santa baby. It says not baby. Santa honey, how about that, how about they that? They do say that in the song. Yeah, yeah. Santa uh, baby. Right. Or I mean Santa. I know we run our boat a little bit ghetto. We're not exactly, we don't exactly keep it like pretty all the time. 
but every so often there's a level of insanity on our boat that is uh <laughs> that's even like beyond the normal things that we're used to on our boat so check this out this is our dinghy line right now that's been adjusted and tightened and retied and moved back and forth so that we could um keep the dinghy at the appropriate length and here's where it is <laughs> because like the yellow line is the dinghy line. <laughs> it's totally silly look at it it's got the carabiner to around this post to around that cleat to around back here, to around back here, to around to this cleat, around here, eventually over the stern to the dinghy. So even we can recognize when things are not pretty. We were having a really wonderful time in the harbor and enjoying the warm weather and clear skies. Cass was able to work out a lot of energy, running around and playing on the playgrounds. We cooked up the last of our sheephead fish for lunch and then got ready to get in the dinghy and head out to do some provisioning. After a quick bit of provisioning, we got in the dinghy and headed out towards the ocean so we could play in the sand and watch sunset. When we got back to the boat, we realized that the power left in our batteries was getting low. When stuck in this situation, I built a unique device that allows me to take advantage of my DeWalt batteries. It's a plastic clip with solar panel quick connects wired to it. You just hook it to your battery, 20 or 60 volt, and then tie it into where your solar panels plug in and you're good to go. It isn't a great long-term strategy, but if you have a boat that uses as little electrical as mine, they can get you through like an hour or two in a pinch. It was getting pretty cold out, so we were using our stove to heat the boat. Unfortunately, our carbon monoxide detector was going off, so I guess we're just gonna have a cold night. We gave Jess the night off from cooking and ordered some sushi takeout. Five stars from a thousand people, so we figured it'd probably be good. This is to celebrate um, Tucker's 17th birthday. If you'd watched our series on Flathead Lake, you'd realize we're tying in that trip with this one by showing our love of garlic fries. Garlic fries. Mm -hmm. those are, actually, those are trouble fries. Oh, trouble fries. So trouble fries this time. We finished dinner and then fell asleep for what was going to be our last night on the boat. It spent um, last night in the uh, harbor really relaxing, really quiet. And the weather looks splendid today, super sunny. Uh, a little warmer today than the past day. It's probably gonna be up around 65 or so today. And uh, we're gonna sail back to Ventura, uh, take the boat out, and, uh, and maybe even start a drive home today. That sounds just super sad. We'll see what Jess wants to do. We're a day ahead of schedule. With Highland Piker shut down, we weren't able to do all the exploring out there with Tucker and Abby, so we're gonna make, cut the trip a day short and head back instead of just kind of sitting in the harbor and go from there. Jess and I stayed back at the boat while Tucker and Cass went into the park to get a little bit of exercise. We got everything packed up and then when Tucker and Cass made it back, we turned the boat around and headed out for the ocean. Got it? Wow. <laughs> Are these abandoned boats right here? Okay, is the hotel abandoned? Yes, well, there now. All those boats look like they've been left with the hotel. Yeah, it's pretty sad. <laughs> yeah. Represent. There we are, finishing up our um, time in Channel Islands Harbor heading back out of the ocean. There was a lot of fog in the harbor, but look, as soon as we get out of the harbor, you can see that the visibility is great. You can see 12 miles out there or 15 miles to Anacapa already. So that's a good sign, meaning we aren't gonna have a big fog issue out here. We were worried about that we might have to just uh, trace our track back from yesterday, but we'll be able to navigate quite easily. We are told too there might be dolphins out here. We're gonna keep our eyes open for those. We'll see, hopefully.
We had just a spectacular day sailing up the California coast. Along the way, we sailed by what looked to be an abandoned lobster pot. We feared it was abandoned because there were no other pots around it and the buoy was underwater most of the time. We took pictures of it and then recorded its location with our chart plotter. Believe it or not, when we got back to the docks, we showed the picture of the buoy to one of the fishermen there and it was his pod. He went back and was able to get it the next day. It was a spectacular week on the water. All we had left to do now was to get the boat loaded on the trailer and everything packed up. So one of the cool things we have going for us today is, is that we there's no one at the ramp at all. So we're taking this time to completely unload the boat and put everything in the truck. Normally what we do is we tow the boat out of the water, get it up there and then unload it and put everything in the truck. But then you're having to deal with that like working in the boat forever, hopefully not falling off and like injuring yourself. So with everything like uh, unloaded here, once the boat's on the trailer, we'll be able to pull away. I like that idea a lot more. I'm always sketched out when we're on the top of the boat and trying to um, hand stuff down and and you're working it back it's gonna be like 20 degrees i don't want to be dealing with hanging out in the boat for a long period of time like loading stuff in the snow so it should work out i'm gonna miss this place a lot this place is awesome we're out of the water but here's a couple points i'd like to remember before we start our drive you gotta check to make sure that the rollers are all square before you drive too far because they can get kind of messed up at least on this trailer Maybe yours is better. And then also you wanna make sure you lower the swing kill the rest of the way to take the weight off the cable so you don't snap it on the on the long drive home. Ours is gonna be about 14, 15 hours. But again, inspect all these rollers, make sure they're all set up correctly. We checked out all of our rollers, put the boat on the trailer, took the mast down, and then headed to a hotel for the night. Yes, you can make it into Ventura, get pizza from these guys. Really, really good. Just getting the last uh, few straps tied on this uh, morning to get ready for our long drive home. Another thing I like to check before starting a long drive home is the grease in my trailer bearings. Seems like there's still a lot of grease on there. Yeah, but it's kind of watery, see that? That's watery. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, if salt water has gotten into one of these, I want to catch it now versus catching it when I overheat my tires somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Let's do this till it pushes out a little. See, look at this one, it's still got water in it. It's filled with water. You can see that in this bearing, the grease has a little bit of a creamy white color. If you see that, it most likely means that you've gotten some water into your axle bearing and you're going to need to replace the grease. I could be watching the Senate hearings right now. You could also have been sent to military school by your parents. Well played, I accept the outcome. Boy, here's the big moment. But it takes that long to calculate, that's not a good sign. Please drive to highlighted route. Oh, we 13 right hours, 29 minutes. We had nearly 900 miles ahead of us, so it was time to get into the truck and start our drive. Look at those women! There's a hundred, like, Google plaques about. Look at it. It's always hard getting off your boat and returning to normal life. Sometimes you have a re-entry that's a little bit more bizarre than all the others. Supposedly, that these are individuals who claim they support law and order. Are, are they hearing these instructions from the police? All right, stop in Fallon, Nevada. Just, it's getting late. We aren't going to try to make it all the way to Winnemuc this night. Ready for bed? Get me out of this car. A little bit of honesty there. We made it! We made it! We made it! Get out of Cass, get Cass out of here! Oh, yeah, there you go. All right, that was a wild long ride. But we're home. All we had left was one quick trip to the dentist to get my broken tooth fixed, and then this trip was in the books. And that was a great time to hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it, and it helps other people to find the channel. Be sure to stay with the channel because we have some major, major changes coming up in our boating future. We're going to also be dropping a couple other videos, which don't necessarily pertain exactly to sailing, but they will highlight some of my other interests outside of this sport. Again, if you ever have any questions about this video or any others, drop some comments down below and I'll be sure to answer every one of them as soon as I can. Until next time, keep dreaming of your next big adventure.
as we approach the Protonars, as we approach... The Oh, 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 oh,